What's going on, y'all? Back with another video. Um, we got a much bigger box this time. This is a vertical blast cabinet that I got from Harbor Freight. Um, I believe I picked this one up for 180 bucks. They're typically, I think, now selling for 230, but they had a special going on, so yay. Um, I'm not gonna be going into every single nut and bolt, how to put this thing together. If I come across something that I feel like is important to mention to you guys, um, I'm gonna, you know, kind of stop the time lapse, go through, you know, point it out and then continue on with it. Um, because I think that if I went through and you know told you how to put this together piece by piece, I mean, it's just gonna take forever. It's gonna be a long, long video. Plus from what I've seen from the directions of this, uh, they have them spelled out pretty well. So stick with your directions. Um, and then if you're unsure about something, you know, pop a look, you know, pop a look, take a look at some videos and stuff like that. Um, there are some things that I'm gonna be switching around um, due to the uh, recommendations of other people that I've seen put this together. So um, that might be something that you're interested. So other than that, let's go ahead and get the video started. Alrighty guys, so inside here, I did, I found this light. So this will be nice for a temporary setup. Um, I don't plan on using this long term. I mean, I might leave it in there, but I plan on putting really bright LEDs in there so I can actually see what I'm doing. This is one of the big complaints. It's nice that it comes with this light. It's just not very, not very big, not very bright. Um, you know, I think it mounts on the left-hand side of the cabinet. And so, you know, you don't have any light on your right-hand side. So, you know, guys run lights all the way across and all the way around and much, much brighter. Um, and it makes a world of difference because you want to see what you're doing when you're doing your parts. So quick little tidbit. All right, guys, another little tidbit. If you're looking for the manual, I, I spent about, you know, 30, 45 seconds looking around. I thought that it might be in the box with the silicone and the uh, spray gun and everything like that. It's not. Um, you actually have to open up your package for the glass that came with it. Um, and then they have this itty bitty tiny manual in there. I think they used to do a bigger one. This seems like it's a newer version because if, if you do look on a bunch of these, it actually has this gasket already pre-installed. And so <clears throat> previous versions, this stuff wasn't there. And so guys would actually go through and then cover every single one of these edges in silicone because everything leaked. Um, I did see that on these newer versions, it wasn't as necessary. Um, it was pretty much kind of get it together, get it up and running, um, you know, go through, see if you have any leaks anywhere. And if you do have any leaks anywhere, go through and do the silicone versus going through and just trying to silicone everything. So I'll have to see what the directions say about that silicone in this manual um, and see if they have any specific places where they're gonna wanna put it. All right, y'all, just another quick little tip. Um, whenever I get hardware that comes in this type of setup where they have everything laid out for you and everything like that, you know, they have all these tabs on the back and I always see people just <laughs> open them up, they dump them everywhere. Um, some people relabel them, some people don't. What I like to do, I like to go and cut the tops off of these and use these as bins. So, you know, instead of working your way through maybe one at a time, 
you know, you start to work your way through one at a time, then you have to grab one of these, then you have to grab one of these, and then one of these. You eventually have all the backs open, and then you're, you know, you have it laid down on the front, and they're flipping back and forth. Well, this way, with the top on every single one of these, you can just grab anything that you need, and it stays perfectly in place, and you know exactly what you need. Um, if you do rip the back of it a little bit, uh, kind of like I did this one, I just took, uh, took a little piece of tape and just retape that piece of cardboard back over there, and then, you know, right there with my bin. So this is going to make it a lot easier and a lot more organized for me to keep up with what's going on where. We're on step one, uh, light clip. Attach the light clip 24 to the inside of the rear cabinet plate 5 with screws 42 and nut 46. So uh, if you scroll back a little bit inside that entire section of uh, nuts and bolts and everything that I showed you, it does have a section where it says light clips. And so you're going to have your light clips, you're going to have your four bolts for the clips, and then you're going to have two uh, with a nut for this. So make sure you're paying attention. The smaller one is going to be attaching the light clips, and then these bigger ones um, hold the light clips together. And you're going to be installing this with the nut side facing to the back side of this. So for these, since we're not actually installing the light right now, just go ahead and get a couple turns so you don't lose these screws. And they stay in place and you can easily unscrew it later when you install the light. Okay, on to the next step. We're gonna be installing uh, the glove mounts and the rings onto the front plate. And so secure the glove mounts ring 29 to the front cabinet plate 11 with tapping screws 41. Slide the glove 27 over the glove mount rings and secure in place with the clamps. So for this, um, since I am gonna have more than a couple parts, I did have to go ahead and grab a little parts bin so I can have this set next to me while I'm working instead of just going back and grabbing one at a time. And for the rings, you have your rings, you have your gasket, and you wanna make sure that this is, goes on to this side and that you line your holes up with this. So uh, do that for each, and then that's gonna seal the front of the cabinet.
So for mine, these holes are off a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these tapping screws in every single one of them and just go ahead and line up every single one of these holes and push them through. Um, I think that's gonna be the best and the easiest way to make sure. It seems like they cut these holes just a little bit too high from where they should have. But once it gets screwed down, it shouldn't be any type of issue. Um, and the way that these are, when these come through here, since they didn't really cut the rubber all the way, these, these will just sit in there. I mean, they're not coming out while you're, while you're messing around with this. So don't be too concerned. Okay, one is done. And y'all, it shouldn't matter which way you put this on. There's not, you know, it's the same on both sides. Same on both sides and there was no indication in the directions to use one side or the other. Alrighty, both those are in. I'm gonna line these up with my holes down here. Um, these are self-tapping screws, so just make sure that you have them lined up properly and get them going. If you are using a drill, make sure you have it turned down quite a bit. You don't need to crank down a ton of force onto these, just enough to make it sealed. All right. I like to do the top one and then the top of the other side. And then kind of go into a star pattern. Nice and sealed. So yeah, guys, once again, if you are using a drill for this, I actually suggest using a hand tool. Um, these, this isn't very thick, so there's really not that much to catch on to. Um, so if you wanna use a drill just to go a little bit faster, just be kind of aware where you're at with it. It only takes a few turns to seat these. Um, and I use my hand on the back, just over the backhand side of the hole, so I can feel if it's aligned or not. And there we go. That portion is installed. I don't really see any gaps. If you do, uh, just give it a quick look, check. See a little one right here. And give it a push down. That one's sealed up. Another small one right there. See, you know, something like this, uh, I honestly feel like they should have just added um, screws and nuts for this. 
if this is a problem later, which I think that it actually might be, I'm probably gonna go ahead and get a set of screw nuts and change these out. I, I can see gaps in here and you know, these are not sealing just because there's not enough material for that self tapper to really grab onto. And if you have to really drill into that, you start to eat in um, to, these, to these plates. So we'll see. Maybe this is one of those areas where, you know, they suggest putting silicone over instead, but I mean. Yeah, but I mean, really, they should have just used nuts and bolts. Okay, so that's on. And now we have gloves. I'm sure I'm gonna mess around with these a little bit, but since this is the top, I'm gonna put my hands in this way. This glove is gonna go here. Make sure to get that fully seated. A ring. Um, I know my blast door is going to be on this side, so I'm going to make sure that I have access to the bottom of this and from the bottom of this one. So when you're putting your ring on like this, don't just put your ring way over here or anything like that or on the top or, you know, facing out towards the side of the cabinet where you're not going to be able to get access to it. Um, it may become a huge pain later. So just take a couple extra seconds to orientate yourself and get those in. Now I'm not gonna fully tighten these right now um, just because I might wanna change these up a little bit later. But just snug enough so they're not going to go anywhere during the rest of this build process. Okay, y'all, we only made it on to step three and I've already ran into an issue. So uh, attach the flange to the outside of the left cabinet plate with tapping screws. You know, that would be great and all. Uh, we were just talking about how I didn't care for the tapping screws um, for the glove ports, but they only sent 12 tapping screws and they were all taken up in here. There's nowhere else in there um, I looked through all the little boxes. I probably spent the last, you know, four or five minutes doing that. So they're not there. You can't do that. Um, I'm also a little bit weary of this as well because I believe that this flange on the left-hand side is for a vacuum port. And so using tapping screws, there's no gasket to go behind it at all. Uh, this is just a plastic flange attached there. So instead of, you know, doing that with the tapping screws, for one, since I do not have them, um, I do have a SAE uh, set of uh, nuts, bolts, and washers. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach that with nuts and bolts. And I may be changing this out later, the location of where I want the vacuum. So this flange port maybe get uh, covered up completely. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch those out. Um, then we'll continue on. All right, guys, so back on that a little bit. Um, I always keep an assortment of uh, Imperial, metric, you know, all sorts of stuff. Um, I got this off of Amazon. They were, it was actually pretty cheap, and I think it came with three different sets of these. Um, and so it just has all your basic size needs and everything like that. I mean, it doesn't have lock washers or nuts or anything like that. So if you do need those, um, you know, or nylock nuts or anything like that, go ahead and get them. But if you're putting something together like this, something like this is probably going to work out, um, just fine. And as I said, that port, I may be switching out completely later on. So this is just going to be temporary so I can kind of get up and running. Okay. All right. Now we're getting to the fun stuff. So now we're pretty much just going to be installing the entire cabinet, <laughs> putting every single little piece together um, to all those nuts and bolts. So this is definitely going to be a time-lapse portion. I'm not, probably really not going to talk much. We're just going to let it sit here and go and go from there. All right, guys. So, um, you know, I noticed this uh, gasket tape on here earlier and something really cool. They already had went ahead and pre-installed this for you. So it seems like when they wrote this part of this manual, 
um, they were trying to tell you in this portion, you know, how to install this tape, you know, put it over the holes, make sure you're create, creating a seal. So if you end up getting one that you don't have this gasket tape on here, pay close attention to that and make sure that you're doing it, doing it correctly. I mean, essentially, you know, if you're looking on this, on this front side, you want the tape directly behind every single one of these holes. So that way, once you put your hole through and you go to tighten, cinch everything up, you're tightening against that gasket so you're not letting anything out. Um, so yeah, kind of glad that I don't have to do that. seems like it's a pain, um, you know, making all these turns and 90s and everything like that. It's just one last thing off the checklist. Something that they did not do, and it makes sense, when they went ahead and put all of this on, um, you know, they put all this tape and there's no push through hole. So yeah, my light just died. So I'm gonna go through and use a small screwdriver and just create an X through here. So hold one side, push, push, just so I have a hole to go through right there. Um, that way, when I'm pushing the screw through, I'm not um, pushing this gasket out or trying to rip it or anything like that. So um, use a small Phillips head, a small flat head or something like that if you have it, and just create a hole like that. And let me show you. And then once you take your screw, it goes through much easier without ripping the entire gasket right there. It took a little piece off. Um, they didn't really align this super, super well. So, you know, just like this one is perfectly aligned over the center, this one, there was a little bit up towards the top. Um, but hopefully that doesn't make any difference with this mating surface. Alrighty, so I had to mess with my camera and lighting a little bit. I plugged my GoPro into this ring light and it did not like it. So it shut everything off. I had to unplug it and then unplug the GoPro. So grab another cable, plug it back in, good to go. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go through around here, anywhere where I have a gasket, continue this and go ahead and poke my holes through here. Um, so hopefully we don't you know, tear the gasket later. So in preparation for this next part, I went ahead and uh, separated the nuts, the bolts, and the washers. And I just wanna show you, that is what I found. So not sure that that's gonna be usable. Um, you know, not very surprising. This is a very low budget blast cabinet, you know. Um, but this is why it's always good to have some extra stuff on hand while you're building this, so. All right, so we're gonna start putting this thing together. I'm gonna start uh, right here, right in the middle. Um, they do say in the directions, do not tighten these up all the way, which is gonna be pretty easy. So that way, once you get everything aligned, you can kind of go back and tighten everything up.
All right, y'all, I did have to back up just a tiny bit just for these four holes um, so I could get the door on. However, <laughs> the holes that I had for the door just barely wouldn't fit. Um, it, I don't think that they were drilled out to the correct size. Maybe it had something to do with the powder coat. I just took a small little step up bit, stepped it up just a tiny bit, and now, you know, I'll be able to get it installed really quickly now. You know, it's funny for this door latch, these are some of the smallest screws. You have two of these holding on that door latch. I, I guess it just doesn't take much force. Not sure how I feel about that, but we'll see how it does. And if it becomes any issue, we'll go ahead and swap it out. And I really don't like that they don't have nylock nuts or anything with this. You know, this door latch is going to get, you know, used quite a bit. You know, open, close, open, close, open, close. So I can definitely see this loosening up over time. I mean, there wasn't even any washers or anything like that included as well. So something that I will definitely be swapping out in the near future. Yep, I don't love that. All right, so with those sides installed, the latch on and everything like that, and directions will now tell you to go through and tighten up every single one of these connections. Remember, we left every single one of these loose while we were doing this. And it makes sense, um, you know, you kind of have to bend some stuff into place, which is also why I was using the drill. Um, I was using the drill to adjust the panels so the threads would catch on to this thin gauge um, steel, uh, sheet metal. Um, and then so I could feed the screw through a little bit easier and a little bit better. So um, I'm just going to go through, pop through, and just start tightening everything down that I can now. Alrighty y'all, so next thing um, on here is installing the lights and the electrical connector for the uh, electrical switch for this. Now, you're probably not gonna be able to see it right here. I'll show a little bit later. My switch is not flat. This thing is kind of crooked. So I did take a uh, rubber mallet to the top of it. I put it down on some, some cement and um, kind of bent it down. 
a little bit a little bit more. I'm still not completely happy with how the way it sits. Um, it kind of rocks. But I think that I'll be switching this light switch out later anyways, because I plan on uh, putting in another switch so that will control my um, dust control and you know control the lighting and everything like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and temporarily install this right now, um, even though that I will be switching it out pretty soon later. So. All right, up next, we got the hopper. We're gonna put everything together like this. Then the legs are gonna go on and then all the parts are gonna start coming together. So, same kind of deal on these as well. They went ahead and pre-installed all these gaskets. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop a hole in, ream it up, ream it open a little bit. Um, I've definitely found this is making it a lot easier to not rip this gasket out.
All right, y'all. Um, I'm gonna do this a little bit differently in the directions it shows to sh just stand this thing vertically as is um, and then lift all this stuff up and then put all these screws in. That sounds like it's gonna be a huge pain. So I went ahead and put it down facing this way so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, you know, I went ahead and put this frame in. Make sure that this other side of the frame that you can fit this grate in there. So this is gonna be, you know, you know, so one side, one side specifically is supposed to be the top, one side specifically is supposed to be the bottom. I'm gonna go through with my screwdriver, um, locate all these holes because I can't see them underneath this foam, but there should be, you know, the screws, you know, you should be able to put the screws through these. So I'm gonna line this up best I can, push through, see if I can find a couple um, and then attach. And then I'm gonna put the hopper back on top with the frame and everything like that. I'm gonna get as many of these tightened as I can. Then I'm gonna flip it over so I can have access from the side and from the top because you really need to have access from the top, especially if you wanna be able to get over to these. Um, I think all of them are gonna be kind of a pain either way. So <laughs> you're just gonna to have to try and do this the best that you can.
I did mess something up uh, pretty majorly. This top piece is upside down. This gasket that's on the inside, I can't believe it didn't click until I was putting this in. Um, yeah, that needs to be facing up so the glass and everything can secure against it. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up all these bolts, um, take this, flip everything over, and uh, yeah, we're gonna go from there. All right, y'all, <laughs> that was super fun. Um, <clears throat> don't make that mistake, then you won't have to deal with it. Just make sure gaskets on this one are facing up. Uh, you know, I don't know why I didn't catch it, but you know, it only took me about, I'd say probably five or six minutes to take this off. So I flipped this down on its side. Um, I took this almost all the way off. I did have to take the legs off and then I was able, able to slide this back and then slide this piece uh, back in there and get a couple screws in it. Um, so now I need to go ahead, go around, finish the rest of the screws, um, and then we'll be back for the glass. I'm not going to show this little bit because I've already shown a whole bunch, but um, next one will be the glass. All right, y'all. <laughs> that was super fun. That added about a half an hour because I wasn't paying attention that um, this was the upper side. So now that we have all of that figured out, let's go ahead and try this out. So...
All right, y'all, <laughs> it's together, and I'm gonna sandblast my first part, okay? So I'm gonna show you kind of what I'm working with. Um, I temporarily set this air tank up to fill this air tank um, so I have more capacity, but I am gonna be putting uh, motors up on here and building that tank out after I get it painted and everything like that. It's gonna be a little bit. So I'm just using this Fortress, I think this is a two gallon, should say on here, yeah, two gallon. Um, just to fill this tank up. So right now I'm sitting at 120 PSI. It took about, yeah, probably about 20 minutes to get these tanks filled to 120 PSI. Plus I was just blasting um, a little bit as well, just to test the gun out um, before I started this. So yeah, so this is gonna be the first real part. Um, I went ahead and shut the compressor off so it's not gonna kick on. Sorry about the audio right now. I know it sucks because my microphone is facing downwards, but um, yeah. Let's, uh, let's see what we get. Now I did temporarily run this line. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more in here as well. So, and I don't have a vacuum running. Stop, do a quick little difference. If you can see this versus, you know, this side. Um, I mean, I definitely need to get a vacuum up here and running as well. The light <laughs> absolutely sucks. Need to get that changed out as well. But if you just look at this little corner right here. So yeah, definitely a good amount of rust. Um, I do have different, a little different plan for that one as well though. And so just from that amount of spraying, my tank dropped down to about 100 PSI. Um, so, you know, I can be able to spray quite a bit of stuff. I am gonna toss something else in there if I can find it. the thing go so this is just a little spatula for my 3d printer to remove prints however i have magnetic bed so i never use it so it has been sitting in a drawer just getting nice and rusted I mean, <laughs> look at that versus what we started with. Then off to the side, and now I do have something else that I'm gonna to toss in there. Which this is gonna be a little bit of teaser for a project 
that I've been working on and that I will be selling later on. So I had painted, I had spray painted this a while ago. And of course, you know, it looks okay, but I mean, it's not exactly great. Uh, the problem is, is also durability. I really kind of just did this to uh, see a color scheme. And so, you know, I want to get these cleaned up and the whole, you know, purpose of this blast cabinet as well is that I'm going to be powder coating this as well as a lot of other stuff. So let's check this one out. there we have it I mean just a crazy nice finish this is just from the glove um, it leaves you know some marks and kind of stuff behind so once that comes out once that comes out that can just be cleaned up but yeah she does a great job all right guys that's where we're gonna end the video um, Catch you next time, and uh, we will be doing some more modifications for this cabinet to get it just a little bit more up to snuff. I already noticed a couple little places where it was leaking, so all this is going to come out. Um, it's going to get cleaned up, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, use silicone all the way around this thing. So, But I was a little bit too excited and really wanted to try this thing out. Have a good one. Catch you next time.